ASRock's Z790 Tai Chi Lite loses some of the bling and premium appearance of the standard Tai Chi motherboard to bring you something that's still high end. But 100 US dollars cheaper, coming in at 380 US dollars. This board manages to retain an impressive amount of features while still looking pretty decent. I like that the design pulls back some of the RGB lighting and only has one stripe near the bottom. So what does it come with and how does it perform? Before that, Isas Partition Master Professional is a comprehensive storage partitioning app for your PC or server. Resize and extend partitions, clone OS drives, convert MBR to GPT, and even recover lost or broken partitions. Find out more in the video description. In the box you will find a Wi-Fi antenna, two SATA cables, M.2 screws, USB 2 bracket, keyboard keycap, manual, and Velcro cable ties. Rear ports consist of dual USB 2, HDMI 2.1, Wi-Fi antennas, SPDIF, line-out, and microphone jack. There are six USB 3 5 gigabit ports. Two of them are Lightning Gaming, and the other two support Ultra USB power, aka 3 ampere charging. The two USB-C ports are Thunderbolt 4 40 gigabit, and there's dual USB 3 10 gigabit. For networking, you've got dual LAN jacks, one being Gigabit and the other Killer 2.5. So, that's a whole heap of USB ports, 12 in total. And of course, you can add another dual USB 2 with the provided rear case expansion bracket. For storage, there are 8 SATA ports, as well as a Gen 5 NVMe slot, and 4 more Gen 4 NVMe. Be aware there's a limitation with the M.2 slots, which can be found on the specs page. You can't use all of them at the same time. The board has two 8-pin CPU power connectors. At least one needs to be used to power the CPU. The Tai Chi Lite is also littered with eight PWM 4-pin fan connectors. That should be enough for practically everybody. The memory slots support up to DDR5-7200 and are made of plastic without steel reinforcement. Four RGB headers are available if you want to light up your PC. There's a Type-C 20 gigabit front panel header to go with the USB 3. Those who care about audio will be happy to hear the Tai Chi Lite features the flagship Realtek ALC 4082 audio codec. For PCIe cards, the top two steel reinforced slots are Gen 5 X16 if one is occupied. Otherwise, it's X8 for both. The bottom slot is Gen 4 X4 and will disable the first four SATA ports if occupied. So, if all storage and card slots are populated, you lose one M.2 slot and four SATA. Also, the top two card expansion slots will run at Gen 5 X8 speed instead of 16. For power delivery, there's a 24 plus 1 plus 2 power phase design that will easily handle a 13900K. It's a really beasty VRM, but I've only got a spare 13700K to test with for this review and I'll be pairing it with DDR5 5600 memory and an RTX 3070 to see how the board performs. Silicon Power also provided me with their Gen 4 NVMe drive to test on this build. It's a 1TB XS70 model, which comes with a heatsink and a 700TB written 5 year warranty. So I'll pop that in and benchmark it too. The BIOS has an easy mode by default, which displays the essentials and is nicely laid out. In advanced mode, you'll find plenty of overclocking options. There's Azerox Polychrome Sync for the RGB if you don't want to install the software in Windows and the fantastic tuning app is easy to use and lets you set whatever fan curve you desire for your CPU and case fans. Azerox's driver install software also works great and installed all the missing drivers on my system without me having to look for them or install them manually. Alright, we'll start with the Silicon Power NVMe benchmark. This drive features 3D TLC NAND with DRAM cache and is rated up to 7300 megabytes a second read and 6800 write. With this 1TB drive, I got pretty close on the read speed, but write speed wasn't as close as the number specified on the packaging. 
Still, it's a solid performing Gen 4 drive and is suitable for PS5 users. Find it linked in the video description for more info. So I tested Cinebench R23 and the score of over 29,000 is okay, but nothing outstanding. My 360mm AIO cooler kept the CPU at 90C without thermal throttling reported, so that was fine. A single core score of 2100 is as expected. The motherboard VRM hit a maximum temperature of 60C, so there's quite a bit of headroom there for overclocking. Just be aware, my test was done on an open bench. So make sure to pair it with a decent case with a fan blowing air towards the VRM if possible. Intel's Alder Lake platform is really mature now. I've been using it since release and I haven't had a single crash on my Z790 Steel Legend, which has been ideal for my content creation rig. There were no stability issues with the Tai Chi light either during my time testing it. All right, so to conclude, the ASRock Tai Chi's price is attractive for the features you get. It has a buttload of storage options. It also has dual Thunderbolt 4 40 gigabit ports and plenty of other USB ports as well. Obviously, it doesn't look as fancy as the Tai Chi now that the design has been simplified. Be aware there are storage limitations if you populate most of the board. And I would have liked to see steel reinforced RAM slots, but overall, I do really like the ASRock Z790 Tai Chi Lite. It gets you all the high-end features from the more expensive Tai Chi, just without the fancy 3D cogs and heat sinks for $100 less. I've looked at similarly priced boards from other brands and none of them offer the same features for the dollars. You have to spend more to get what this board offers. So if the ASRock Z790 Tai Chi Lite has what you're looking for, it's recommended and wins out on price. But if you're looking for something less flashy, check out my review of the ASRock Z790 Steel Legend Wi-Fi, which also provides good bang for buck. Cheers!